your first look at high school football scores and highlights. This is First Down Friday Night, sponsored by Papa John's, your community health mart pharmacy, Whataburger, and P2EDI. Now your hosts, Mo Carter, Naomi Gray, and Jonah Carp. Hey, what's going on, everybody? And welcome to the Week 7 edition of First Down Friday Night. And, of course, Week 2 of the rebranded version of The Great Show. He's Jonah Carp, and I'm Mo Carter. Jonah, welcome to the studio. Oh, thank you. It's very nice in here, and we got pizza. Absolutely. You know the deal. The people from Papa John's hooking us up with the shackaroni pizza for just another week. And you got your slice, right? I got my I got two slices. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, man. Thanks for feeding us, Papa John's. No and doubt. And uh, before we take a look at any of these games, let's first check on the third member of our crew, Naomi Gray, out in Florence with a look at what's coming up later in the show. Naomi? Hey guys, well, a seven game win streak was on the line at Central High School. That's where the Wildcats hosted the Priceful Bulldogs in our varsity game of the week. I'm going to have those highlights and results later in the show. All right, thank you so much, Naomi, on that one. So, of course, there are a lot of great games across the Tennessee Valley, including that show's area. Of course, Naomi will hook us up with Varsity Game of the Night later on. But gotta, I got to take it to Muscle Shows. Tonight is a huge matchup between Hartzell and Muscle Shows. Both teams coming to the game undefeated. So that means that somebody's leaving with a loss and also somebody's leaving with the top spot in that region. So let's take you out there for all the action, everyone. It was a huge one going down out there. We will start off with this. Luke Peoples for Muscle Shows. He rolls out. He finds Devin Townsend in the back of the end zone for a Trojans touchdown. Seven to nothing. Muscle Shows on top. But back comes Hartso. John Blackwood, the quarterback for the Tigers, on the play action. Throws Deep down the field, Isaiah Jonah, Blackwell. he's got a man. There it is. Isaiah Ooh. Fletcher, 41 yards for a touchdown. Game tied at seven apiece. All right, back and forth we go on this one. If you like points, then this was your game. All right, William Berry, he was a little sick because he coughed up the ball into the end zone, but the Trojans will recover, and they go on top 14 to seven with that touchdown. Back comes Hartzell, John Blackwood going for his favorite receiver. Once again, it's Isaiah Fletcher streaking across the middle and carries a man into the end zone for a score. We're tied at 21 going into the break. In the second half, Hartzell commits to the run. Thanks to the work of Rye Fletcher. And look at Fletcher. He makes a move and he's gone. 48 yards for a touchdown right there to put Hartzell on top for the first time in this game. Then later on, it'll be Mr. Rye Fletcher once again, Jonah. Once we get right there, and here he is. He'll hand it off. He'll follow his block. Bounces outside, and he's into the end zone for a score. Hartzell up by double digits at that point. Let's check out your final from Muscle Shows tonight as Hartzell goes on to win by final of 52 to 35. Next week, Hartzell will take on Hazel Green while Muscle Shows, they will travel to Buckhorn. Tanner trying to protect their first place bid tonight against Falkville. So let's take you out there for all the action. The Blue Devils kick it deep. And of course, you know the weather has played a major part this year. It's been raining, so the fields are a little soaked. I think, Jonah, you talked about how bad the field conditions were last night. Well, look what happens right here, man. Oh, man. Yeah, exactly. He tries to um, pick the ball up, but unfortunately, um, yeah, he's getting stopped at the five-yard line. But that's okay because Tanner can find a way to go down the field. Nicholas Griffin having no problem as he bowls over a man for a first down. Then it's Trey Crutcher sticking to the left side. He will pick up a first down. Just, hey, you know, nickeling and dominating down the field. Then it's Alex Guster on the speed sweep around the left side. And look at him. He's taking it to the house for a touchdown right there. Rattlers strike first. They're up seven to nothing. Hey, let's take a look at the updated score that we've got right now for Tanner and Falkville. Right now, it's in the fourth quarter. Tanner has a 35 to 28 lead over Falkville. We'll hook you up with a final score coming up very soon on first down. Friday night. Well, a couple of shootouts to start off the show. It's been a rocky season for the Huntsville Panthers and perhaps even rockier for the Austin Black Bears who have dropped four straight and five of six to begin the year. Huntsville fresh off a victory against Albertville looking to ride that high into its first win streak of the season. Panthers out in the cave of the Black Bears. Austin up 14 to 7 in the second quarter. Dier Young in the shotgun, whips a pass to Nicholas Creighton, turns on the Jets down the sideline, and he's pushed out of bounds inside the red zone. Black Bears in position to tack on some more. Handoff, Tyler Cooper, and he finds pay dirt, takes a seat on the goal line. That's pretty definitive. Hey, look, check this out. 
the moon is glowing Austin orange, like the Empire State Building. Pretty cool. Time drained, less than a minute to play in the half. Stone Law is trying to make something happen. Takes a village to bring him down. My goodness, clock still rolling. Panthers down two scores. Looks sideline and Lawless sends it to Benjamin Brookman. Takes it out of bounds. Enough time for one final play. Here we go. Might as well go for the end zone, right? Lawless skies a bomb and picked off. Trajan Stover. That's how the first half comes to an end. When it was all said and done, here's what the final score looked like. 31-21, Austin takes the victory against Huntsville. Next week, Florence against Huntsville. Austin travels to Albertville. The high scoring continues, man. The high scoring continues. What a show we have on our hands, huh? Let's keep the ball rolling. James Clemens looking to stay in that one seat of Class 7A Region 4. Tonight they visited Grissom at Milton Frank Stadium. Grissom in punt formation in their own territory. They go for the fake. Landon Curry toss to Frankie Johnson, the second, and he picks up a first down. Oh, those tricky Tigers, right? But the momentum, they wouldn't last long. Here's Crutcher stopped in his tracks and sacked by Darren Verhage and a fleet of Jets. Grissom would punt soon after. Later, Gio Lopez, he goes to work. He tosses the little screen to Tyreek Walker and he'll follow his blocks and Tip goes his way to the end zone for a Jets score. James Clemens leads 10-0. Here come the flags. Second quarter, yeah, there are the flags. Lopez in the second quarter, he fires a laser to the back of the end zone. Kobe Johnson on the receiving end, another Jets score. They led 17 zip at that point. And here's the final. Jets soar and remain unbeaten with a 31-13 victory next week. James Clemens at Sparkman, Grissom at Bob Jones. Mo. All right, let's head over to Madison Academy where the Mustangs were hosting Madison County last night. The little Mustangs getting the chance to trot across the field at the half. Third quarter, Mustangs up by 20. Carson Korean rolls out and hits Tim Spurlock and the guy they call Deuce is rumbling down the field. Pick up the first down and a big block right there at the end. That drive was stalled, so they attempt a 48-yard field goal, but Ian Vashon's attempt is blocked by Case Watson. Tigers will take over. But uh, they go three and out, so Madison County, the Tigers, they are forced to punt. So Bob Gossie says, hey, they're going to kick it deep. Just make sure somebody feels it, and after somebody feels it, just, you know, make some good blocks. So the guy who's back there is Jalen Holm. He, you know, Makes a couple of guys miss, and then after that, he's got a convoy. We're going to speed it up a little bit. He's going to hurdle a man, and eventually he gets knocked out by one of the offensive linemen right there at the two-yard line. Coach Gotti says, you know what? You got us all the way down the field. Let's go ahead and reward you right here. Holmes goes into the end zone for a touchdown. Some extracurriculars after the play is over. A couple of guys from Madison County getting a little chippy with Academy. Lots of flags on this play. Let's check out your final score from this one. Madison Academy rolls to a 42 to seven victory next week. They travel down to New Hope while Madison County will travel to DAR. And of course, the WZDX sports team is on social media. A few things have changed. Follow Mo at Mo Carter Fox 54. Follow Naomi at Naomi Gray TV. You can follow me, Jonah, at Jonah Carp TV. Send us a tweet. We may read it on the air later. Absolutely. Now, I seen it the first quarter on first down Friday night. Up next, we're heading back out there to the show's area for some other matchups that have home playoff implications on the line. Stay tuned. And welcome back. It's second quarter time now here on First Down Friday Night. He's Jonah Carp. I'm Mo Carter, and we're missing somebody, we, we are missing somebody. It feels kind of empty in here. Naomi Gray is out in the Shoals area covering tonight's varsity game of the week, Florence and Sparkman. Hi, Naomi. Hey, Jonah. Hey, Mo. Well, I think that a lot of these teams are starting to smell the playoffs on their horizon because all the victors in my game tonight didn't spare their opponents any mercy. A seven-game win streak was on the line at Central High School. That's where the Wildcats took on the Priceville Bulldogs in a top Class 4A Region 8 matchup. Let's get to those highlights. Central Florence ran on the field with flags in honor of former Wildcat Sergeant Nick Reisner, who passed away last weekend. And the Wildcats will get the ball to start the game, but we saw a lot of that aggressive Priceville defense on the opening drive. That's our former offensive lineman of the week playing on the defensive end, Tyler Cappy, sparing no mercy on Wildcats running back Jaden Smith. 
and the Bulldogs were forced to three and out and waste no time on their opening drive. Check out Mason Cardi busting out like a bat out of hell for a whole lot of green and a whole lot of glory for a Bulldog score. They'll charge to an early 7-0 lead. Ensuing drive now, Wildcats ball, and we're seeing double from the Bulldogs defense. Check out the big guy again, Tyler Cappy, wrecking havoc on the line of scrimmage. It'll ultimately be a turn of downs. Bulldogs go back on the hunt. But look what happens. Quarterback Jason Prickett takes a snap to the helmet, forcing a fumble, and it's recovered by the Wildcats. But man, oh man, will the glory be short-lived. Bulldogs force another three and out, and it'll be right back in their possession. Remember our guy, Mason Carty? Well, this time he's taking the snap and calls his own number on the goal line. He'll camouflage into the pile, but he'll get to the pylon for his second touchdown on the night and the 14-0 lead in the first. But let's take a look at your final score. Heading a few miles away to Brawley Stadium for another big region matchup. Florence hosting Sparkman. Florence had a 7-0 lead with seconds to go in the first half. And they didn't stop there. Caleb Mahan drops back to escape the heavy pressure and dials one up to Elijah Hartnett. And he walks right in for another Florence touchdown. They'll take a 28-0 lead to the locker room. And get this, they'll pick up right where they left off. On the goal line, Jalen Simpson takes a snap for the QB keeper and stamps another one right in for Florence. That's 35 zip, but who's counting? I am, and let's add to that tally. Still in the third here, Florence ball. Kayla Mahan dives into his bag of tricks, breaks right for the keeper, but psych! William Watkins grabs a switch and starts slicing and dicing the secondary before he finds pay dirt, and Florence will never look back. Here's a look at how they finish things off. Well, yeah, I'm just still shocked over that ending for this Florence and Sparkman game. Another loss for Sparkman last week. Leron White fell to his brother, Calvis White, Bob Jones. And I still just can't believe it. Still shocked. But let's take a look at what's happening next week. We got Central Florence traveling to Brooks, while Priceville will travel to Deschler. Then Florence will travel to Huntsville. And Sparkman has a big one in James Clements. I mean, we just don't know what's going to happen each week after week, but I know for certain next week I'm bringing the popcorn. <laughs> All right. I like that, Naomi. I really do like that. And, of course, I know you got to be more shocked than anyone to see Florence lose back-to-back -back games, right? Mo, if you're talking to me, you got to talk a little louder. There's some people mowing the lawn out here. I can barely hear anything. <laughs> All right, I was just saying, I'm sure you were pretty shocked to see Sparkman lose back-to-back -back games. <laughs> yes, I really was. But guys, handle the rest of the duties tonight. I'll see you guys later. All right, All right. safe travels back to the Rocket City, Naomi. Appreciate that. Jonah, we got some more highlights. Yeah, we got our instructions. Let's handle the duties. Let's head back west. Tharptown hosting Sheffield. No score in the first quarter. The Bulldogs threatening right on top of the goal line. Handoff to Marion Vaughn, and he does the rest. Overpowers the line for the score. Sheffield up early. Meanwhile, the story for Tharptown is this. Trouble with the snap. Hunter Reynolds struggling to control the ball behind center. The Wildcats with nothing brewing offensively early in the game. Sheffield, they looked sharp on offense, however. Clicking on all cylinders, Skylar Johnston sends a rocket to the moon and down into the waiting arms of Antonio Perry for the touchdown. Up two scores in the second quarter, and they weren't done. The give to Vaughn again, and check this out. He's got a runway. Beast mode down the sideline, brought down inside the red zone. Tharptown needs a stop. Miscommunication on the handoff. Wildcats recover the fumble. Couldn't capitalize, and on the ensuing punt block, that rolls into the end zone for another Sheffield score. Nothing going right for Tharptown. Let's check out your final from this game. Sheffield, they win in a route, 47 zip. Next week, Sheffield, they enjoy a bye. Tharptown travels to Hatton. Further down the road, Yesterday, Phil Campbell hosted an undefeated Lauderdale County. Bobcats down 7-0 in the third. Kyle Pace drops back to pass, fires a rope up the seam. Tipped and picked, Eric Fuqua Jr. with the interception. The Tigers take over with great starting field position. 
looking for some late game insurance. Fuqua now in at quarterback, heaves a rainbow down the sideline. Nifty hookup with Braden Brown. Lauderdale County knocking on the door of the end zone. Fourth down at the one yard line. Fuqua eh, just takes it himself. Muscles in for the score. Two possession lead for the Tigers down the stretch. The Bobcats looking for life. Down 13 nothing. Pace back to throw again. Dish down the middle. This time connects with Andrew Green in stride. A house call for Green. Deficit cut to just one possession. A little too little, too late. Phil Campbell wouldn't get the ball back. Let's show you the final score from this game. Lauderdale County, they go on to win it. 13-6, low scoring game. Next week, Lauderdale, they, they host Colbert Heights. Phil Campbell travels to East Lawrence. Mo. All right, coming back close to the home. Westminster Christian hosting St. John Paul II on the last night. It's the Wildcats against the Falcons. The Wildcats, they move the ball well with their quarterback, Brandon Mush, who is one of our youngest first off Friday night MVPs ever. And of course, he actually gets the ball right here, knocked out of his hands, and the Falcons will recover. We talked about those sloppy conditions and yep. how things would go. Now, after a quick three and out, Wildcats back with the ball with the passing game. Mush to Lattimore for the quick out to the right. Then is Mush uh, rolling out, and I think I might be ahead of myself here, but he gets the ball right there to Lattimore, and then Lattimore will pick up some good yardage deep down inside of Falcons territory. Then it is Mush once again stepping back, avoids a little pressure here, and then heaves it to the end zone, and he's got a man for a touchdown right there. Seven to nothing. Let's check out your final score last night from Westminster Christian. They rolled to a 35 to seven victory over St. John Paul. Westminster's got Randolph next week. St. John Paul will take on North Jackson. We'll return Ari Hubbard and Decatur Heritage vying for first place in their region. We've got those highlights coming your way after the break. R.A. Hubbard, Decatur Heritage. Look at the swag on this entrance. Cool. First play for the Eagles offense, Braden Kyle doing what he does best. Remember when he was our MVP of the week? I do. Yeah. And th this is why. Dude can fly. First play of the game. You bet that set the tone. Chiefs trying to get even. Keandra Cobb with a dish in the flat. Loose ball. That's recovered by Decatur Heritage. So the ball goes back to the Eagles. Third and 30. Yeah, you heard that right. Kyle again, stumbling and heaving. Caught? Yeah, Nash Rippin somehow comes down with it. That only gained 23, so it's still fourth and seven. Bad snap. Kyle floats it toward the end zone. That's picked off by Cobb. It takes a quarterback to know a quarterback. Chiefs didn't score. Back to the Eagles. Kyle again. Just take it yourself, man. Why not? Just do, do your thing all the way to the house. Let's, uh, let's take a peek. The final score from Trinity. Decatur Heritage, they go on to win it by a final of 48 to 16. Next week, Decatur Heritage, they travel to Cherokee. R.A. Hubbard heads to Waterloo. All right, thanks, Jonah. Now, the partnership between the Fox 54 sports team and Pro Football Hall of Famer Walter Jones, it continues to roll on another year as we will always honor a deserving student athlete with the B2EDI Walter Jones Offensive Lineman of the Week Award. Here's our newest winner. Two of the most potent offenses in all of North Alabama reside in the city of Madison. And both of those programs can thank their offensive lines for the production. B2 EDI has already honored the big men who control the line of scrimmage at Madison Academy. And now we're looking at James Clemens. The undefeated Jets are averaging 41 points a game and the O-line is now anchored by two offensive linemen of the week. Last year we had Edge Watson and this year we're introducing you to Zeke Gideon. You know, it starts up front with those guys, I mean, and they don't get the recognition. That's why I appreciate this so much, that, that a guy like Zeke can be uh, awarded for his hard work. Standing at six foot one and weighing nearly 300 pounds, Zeke Gideon is one of the guys that lives and breathes by the Jets' motto of having joy in the journey. He exceeds at that by doing everything right. Every good, it's all about assignment. It's, um, worrying about the people behind you and executing your blocks. Zeke is one of those guys who loves to serve up the pancake blocks on the field while protecting his quarterback. But off the field, he also serves up different types of recipes, especially when it comes to helping out his family. Uh, I help my mom cooking. I want to do culinary in my future if you know, football doesn't really work out for me. Doesn't miss work. He's you know, self-reliant. Um, and, you know, like he said, he, he does a lot of cooking and things like that for his mom and helps out at home. What are some of your favorite dishes? Got to ask you that. Dishes, uh, more, more pasta, lasagna, all that. 
Because Z Gideon has a recipe for success on and off the field, the Fox 54 sports team, along with B2EDI, considered him as a perfect selection for our next Walter Jones Offensive Lineman of the Week. Gideon was a little shocked to receive the award, but he understands that it's a high honor. Uh, this is all thoughts are all in my head, just going around crazy. Just an outstanding uh, young man, and we're so proud to have him in the program. As always, Gideon was greeted by Walter Jones via FaceTime. He'll be able to meet the Pro Football Hall of Famer later in the year at the banquet. So congratulations to Zeke Gideon on being named our newest Walter Jones Offensive Lineman of the Week. Last week, Madison Academy defeated Randolph 42-16. The Mustangs sprinted to a victory led by their star running back, Will Stokes, who tallied 182 all-purpose yards and scored five touchdowns. A stat line that earned him our latest first down Friday night MVP brought to you by Whataburger. Hey, we saw a lot of great performance tonight. You know how to nominate by now by heading over to our website, fox54.com. For the whole crew, for Naomi Gray and Jonah Carp, I'm Mo Carter. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on First Down Friday Night. First Down Friday Night is sponsored by Papa John's, your community health mart pharmacy, Whataburger, and P2EDI.